JPL, for those that are here in the sanctuary, if you're new to JPL, we have what we call our connection cards. And so they're located in back of the chair that's in front of you. And so we encourage you and everybody else that's in here, you can go ahead and take out the connection card. 
and fill it out. And then on the oh, and on the back side, there's an opportunity for you to do write down some prayer requests, praise reports. So we encourage you to do that, and you can drop your cards in and the little black boxes on your way out. But if you're visiting, we would encourage you to keep your card and on your way out at the information table, our guest information table. Deanne Watson is going to be our guest host. She would love to meet you and offer you a little gift. We have three choices of gifts, so that's always a fun thing. Hey, and I also want to encourage you to stay connected. So we, we have some groups that are going on this summer. A couple are live, and we had a great time on Tuesday night with some ladies. And there's also some Zoom things going on. So please check out the website. Get into a group this summer. We encourage that. And then last but not least. I had some great time with some men, too. That's right. On the yeah. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. You do. You. <laughs> That's pretty sad when we can have a great time on the Zoom, right? How times have changed. That's right. <laughs> And then also for you married couples, it's not too late, but there is a marriage dinner tonight at Daniel's Table in Cathedral City. That's at 5.30. And if you haven't signed up, Denise tells me there's room for some more couples. And it's going to be great. I know they have a little, there's a fun game plan. There's some prizes. We like prizes. And incredible food. If you've not gone to Daniel's Table, you need to go there. So anyway, sign up. You can do that through the website. And you can pay online. It's pretty easy. So that's tonight at 5.30. Thank you, Marty. Appreciate that. I'll hold on to that for a minute. I'm going to invite Joanne to come up here. You know, um, we, it, it was interesting. She, she had a word about peace. The songs were about peace. Um, I was thinking about peace. So we're going to sow a little peace um, in here right at the start. You know, there's nothing like peace that can, um, you can just stay down there. She can stay down there and speak. Yeah. Nothing like peace that prepares us for anything that the Lord wants to give us. Peace makes us open, right? So why don't you go ahead and, and share your words and not just do a little prayer here. Yes, as we were worshiping, it became very clear the Lord was stirring something in me. And it's called the Shalom of God, which is the spirit that destroys chaos. Amen. Okay. And the second part of that is the Shalom is the spirit of God that destroys chaos. wrong authority Amen. over our lives and in our lives. And as we embrace the peace of God, which passes all understanding, everything begins to come into order. Chaos and darkness have to flee. Fear has to flee. Doubt has to flee. And it destroys any territory that we have yielded to the enemy. Any area that we have yielded to the enemy. He destroys the legality that the enemy has against us Amen. when we walk in the shalom of God. So I'm going to declare shalom over each and every one of us in this sanctuary and those watching online today. We declare the shalom of God to destroy false authority and to destroy the chaos in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Joanne. You know, what's the beauty about that as well is that the spirit in us is stronger than the spirit in the world. So we can have shalom and peace in the middle of chaos. It might be chaos around us, but not for us. Right. We, we will have, maintain our peace. We're not dependent on our circumstances to have our peace. World, will you please be good so I can have peace right now? I'm trying to be zen. You, you know, we don't need, we don't need that. And so I'm just going to speak the verse I love to, to, I'm going to do it really quick, but I'm going to still speak the verse I love over peace. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 is one of them. And Lord, we just thank you. The Lord says, don't worry about anything. It's a sin to worry. And when we repent of it, we have power over it. Don't worry about anything instead of worrying, which does no good except gives us stress and hurts our body. Pray about everything, which does a lot of good. <laughs> Pray about everything. Tell God just what you need. What, and, and thank him for all he's done, and you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand, and his peace will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, we just want to receive those words right into us right now. Lord, that they'd be working right into us, that we would experience your wonderful peace that's even beyond understanding. You, know, you have that kind of peace, and people say, how can, you, how can you be so peaceful? And you say, I really don't know, <laughs> but I am. It's, that's the piece that exceeds understanding. 
So Lord, thank you for that. Well, let's take a look at a, a testimony that we have for this morning. So during this coronavirus pandemic, there were some times when I was feeling a little down. And a couple of days ago, the Lord told me to grab my flags and just go and flag outside. And my family and I, we live on a golf course. And so I grabbed my flags and I went and I started flagging on the golf course. And on the other side, we have a bunch of neighbors and some of them I've never even met before. And about 10 minutes into my flagging, one of my neighbors walked up to me and she said, I was just watching you flag and I suddenly got so happy. Do you mind if I record you? And I was just like, well, sure, I don't, I don't mind at all. And after she was done, she asked me, she said, where did you learn to dance like that? How did you flag like that? And it suddenly became such a good opportunity for me to share my testimony about how the Lord let me dance or taught me how to dance and for me to meet a new neighbor. It was a great experience. And I'm telling you, when I walked back into my house, I just fell to my knees and I just started praising the Lord. It was, it was a great day. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. Hi, my name is Cheryl Mena and I am destined for victory. I love that about uh... of raving up her Jesus flag, <laughs> sailing around under a Jesus flag. Well, um, I'd like to uh, speak about um, a uh, tsunami this morning. You know, we have a vision prayer team at JPL, and it's like we go fishing, you know, and we're fishing and waiting for, for um, revelation, seeing what the Lord might want to speak to us. And, you know, we, we've got our telescopes out. We're looking at heaven, looking for vision. And uh, the other day, Nina called us, and she received a vision of a tsunami breaking and sweeping across America. It broke on the West Coast, and it swept all the way across the country, and it uncovered sin and it, it shook up the country, but it also woke up the church. And I, I thought, well, that's interesting, Nina, because I heard the same vision uh, two or three years ago at a, at a conference, a, a big conference. They were sharing that. And even you can see it start to happen. I've heard apostles, prophets, pastors over this past couple months, and they're all talking. It's a new normal. Things are changing, and they're not done changing either. They are in flux. I had a prophetic word about JPL uh, about 12 years ago. It has been confirmed so many times by people inside and even outside the church, even people that don't know anything about the church. Most recently, Cheon, though he knows about the church, but it, and the, the word is that you are going to experience explosive revival. And I can see in my, my mind's eye, when I see all these changes, you know, did you hear about the tsunami? When, when they're going to hit, they pull back. And it's like all of a sudden there's all the, the sand gets a lot, a lot more room to sunbathe. You know, the, the water goes out, and but then it rushes back in. I can see these changes like, hey, what's happening to the water? It's going, it's going out, and it's coming back. I'm crashing into a revival tsunami, I believe, that some people are predicting a billion-person harvest in the world towards the end times. Now, if you read American history um, and statements, and maybe the legal documents like the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, state constitutions. If you go and read the monuments on buildings and, and uh, on different, I mean, inscriptions on buildings and monuments, I mean, it's pretty obvious that this country was founded, if not founded on a Judeo-Christian worldview, it's heavily influenced by a Judeo-Christian um, worldview. Um, it, uh, that's not to say that it's a Christian country as uh, the Native Americans and, and the slaves and, and freed slaves living under Jim Crow w would say. In fact, you know, in the, around, seven, around 1800, there were so few Christians um, going to church in America that one of the Supreme Court justice predicted America, Christianity would disappear from America in like 20 years or something. So I'm not saying that this is a big giant church, but it, it's, 
It's influenced by the Judeo-Christian worldview. And in the 1700s, and again in the 1800s, we had two great awakenings. You can read about it in the history book. They were so impacting on our country, where many Christians reformed many parts of our culture. And um, what happened after that, they, so they reformed the culture in the, in the 1700s and 1800s, and then it, it, revivals tend to go and they start to ebb, right? They, they're high and they start to kind of die down, especially when you start different generations. And so these revivals kind of ebb down. And they, in the 1900s, we had a couple of localized revivals. However, the, they kind of ended up in a, um, some churches that didn't even believe the Bible. You know, there were churches going to church, but they didn't really believe the Bible was God's word. Then you had another group, they believed the Bible was God's word and they were very legalistic. And between the, the two of them, um, it was kind of like the Bible's a smorgasbord, you know, where you could kind of pick and choose what, what, what you felt like you needed there. Oh, I don't want, I don't want to believe that. You know, you just kind of picked and choose. Basically what it's like, it's like when the, when the Bible says, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world. When we pick and choose for, with Christianity like that, basically what you end up with is the world spray painted over with religion. Yeah. And, and, and it's a serious matter. You may be in a church, but it says, if you love the world, don't you, it says in James, don't you know that if you um, are friends with the world, you're enemy with God? You know, so it's a serious thing. Now, um, during the 60s, we had a lot of things happen. We had the amazing civil rights movement. When you look at what's happening today, it makes me even more appreciate Martin Luther King and, and that civil rights movement, the way that they conducted themselves. And then we had the hippies fly in. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, um, you know they, they did some good things, too. They, they produced some good things in our culture, I think. They, you know, they, they supported a lot of them, civil rights and different things. You know, but they, they kind of, they had a, uh, I would say, a happy, a happy face, a happy peace and joy face on. But the problem was they embraced 1 Peter 4.3. The evil things godless people enjoy, they embraced. What are they? It says immorality, check. Lust, check. Um, feasting, drunkenness, wild parties. And even the, um, it says the terrible worship of, idol, of idols because they introduced idolatrous Hinduism. So it was almost like this demonic revival swept in with a happy face. You know, and um, it's like the Bible says there's an angel of light. Seems good? It's not. It's, it's demonic. So this, this influence swept in, and it kind of changed our Judeo-Christian um, culture. And we saw um, it was kind of getting pushed out by a hedonistic, kind of like freedom culture, which freedom meant whatever I want to do, like drugs and, and sex, which has bad fruit to it, like damaged marriages, abortions, um, damaged kids. And so um, at the same time, the Lord raised up the Jesus Movement revival. And the Jesus Movement swept thousands and thousands of people right into the kingdom of God. But since then, the Judeo-Christian worldview has kind of been under attack, really, um, in some universities. It's declining, right? It's decreasing in our overall culture. And it's being replaced by um, other cultures that are being promoted, such as the, the PC, a woke culture. That's actually a worldview um, that is pro promoting a different life in government um, for our country. Uh, Ephesians 6.10 says, um, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so you'll be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. He's got strategies. He's, he, he's like playing pool. He knows it's 10 shots ahead. <laughs> we're playing chess. You know, strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Uh, instead, we are um, fighting against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. And so, really, Satan, he's playing ahead. His, his aim isn't necessarily America. What he's aiming at is those churches in there. He's aiming at those mission organizations. 
those pesky things that keep spreading the gospel around over the world and in the country. But it says in, um, uh, in uh, Psalms 2, uh, Psalms 2 says, the kings prepare for battle and the rulers gather together, plotting, gather to plot against his anointed one. It says, let's free ourselves of their chains, they cry. Let's free ourselves from slavery to God. And it says, the one who rules in heaven laughs. And the Lord mocks them. You know, we, we've seen how much one little virus can disrupt this whole big country with all our nuclear weapons and everything we have, and we're ready for everything. One little virus. You know, you know in the book of Revelations, I don't know about this one, but in the book of Revelations, the Lord sends viruses. It's part of his judgment. Yes, yes. Who knows? This could have been one. But if it wasn't, I'm telling you, he could send another one <laughs> anytime he wants and totally disrupt our country. But what the Lord is going to do is he's going to disrupt the church and the country with revival. That, that's his end. Now, we don't need to have a Judeo-Christian worldview. Excuse me, I'm going to get my water over here, get a drink. I put it a little far from me, but I need the exercise. <laughs> Maybe I'll see if I can't knock it over. So we don't, we don't need a Judeo-Christian worldview in order to, um, for Christianity to work. When Christianity started, I tell you, that was no Judeo-Christian worldview. It was a Roman Empire. They were occupying many countries over a large part of the landmass in, in Asian Europe. And um, they, uh, they were occupying these countries, and they embraced other philosophies, mythologies. You know, when I was in junior high, Greek and Roman mythologies, they believed that was what they thought was true, and, um, and other religions as well. Now, now the Romans were pretty awesome organizers, administrators, and builders. I mean, these guys, they built roads that are still existing today. I wonder if our highways will last that long, you know. Uh, they, they had a great shipping system. Um, they had a common language, and they had government that really unified the whole empire. And the Acts revival took advantage of those roads and the shipping and the common language. However, the government opposed them very often. And so for the first 300 years when Christianity started, it started under rejection. There was misunderstandings. Uh, the, with the Lord's Supper, they thought they were cannibals. Um, you know, with loving each other, brothers and sisters, they thought they were libertine. You know, there were misunderstandings and there were lies. There was mocking. There was persecution, financial and otherwise. And there was, a, at times, even violent persecution where you had martyrs and murder going on, Christians being killed. Um, and so uh, after it, the revival kept going on during all that persecution for 300 years, they won so many converts that finally Constantine, it's almost like if you can't beat him, join him, he declared a official toleration um, declaration over, over the Roman Empire called the Edict of Milan in 313. They were officially tolerated, no more persecution. And then in 381, the Emperor Theodosius declared the Christian religion the official empire of the Roman, uh, official religion of the Roman Empire. What a change. Well, that was, I'm sure they all thought that was a blessing. It had some mixed effects to it because now all these Romans poured in, you know, now the church was favored. You could maybe advance your career, your pol political career going to church now. And so you could end up with churches that were more Roman than Christian. Once again, cultural Christianity. Well, that's only a Holy Spirit away. Revival is only the Holy Spirit away in, in any church. You think about those disciples. You know, we want to get an education. They, so they, they got three years of education, the disciples. However, when I went to school, I had like, I don't know, six hours of classes a day, five days a week. You know, I, I forget how many it was. They were there 24-7, seven days a week for three years. That's a ton of education. And you got a, the best professor, too, Jesus. And even though they were so prepared with all that, Jesus says, don't even try and do your ministry without the Holy Spirit. You're not, you won't, it won't work. You can't be prepared enough to do the Holy Spirit without the, I mean, to do the, your ministry without the Holy Spirit. 
And so um, Jesus says in Acts 1-4, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father has sent the gift which he has promised you. As I said before, John the Baptist baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in Acts 1-8, and you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. And then he lists Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And then on the day of Pentecost, 40 days later, uh, Acts 2, they were just worshiping and praising like we're doing um, and praying, and the Holy Spirit fell on them. They were all baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they became models for all Christians and all churches. Can you believe that? They probably would have never imagined something like that. Well, um, the New Testament describes, if you look at it, it describes the normal Christian life that they modeled. It's the normal Christian life. It's not an exalted one for a, a select few. It's the normal Christian life. Yeah. It, Ephesians 4.21 says, since you have heard about Jesus and you've learned the truth that comes from him, throw, this is to everyone, throw off your sinful nature and your old former life corrupted by lust and deception. Let the spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes and put on your new nature created to be like God. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Not cultural Christianity. Created to be like God, truly righteous and, and holy. So if we are not growing in that way, we need revival. Um, Ephesians 4.30 says, Don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. You're making them sad. <laughs> you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 1. Don't accept God's marvelous, you know, the marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. You know, normal Christianity means that we are um, growing in every way uh, more and more like Christ in our life and in our ministry. And if we aren't doing that, if we aren't aiming at what we see in the book of Acts for a life in, in a, a church, we have cultural Christianity. That's what we have. No matter, you know, what we're doing, that's the measure. And if you have cultural Christianity, you need revival, yeah. which is a Holy Spirit away. Yeah. Repentance in the Holy Spirit away. Uh, Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine because that will just ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and the, the Greek word there means be filled now and stay filled. Stay that way. And we do that by when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I feel I'm good. Okay, everything's good between us. Oops, I just did a sin. Now I have a choice. I can stay filled with the Holy Spirit or stifle the Holy Spirit. I think I'll stay filled with the Holy Spirit. So confess the sin. Yes, I did that, Lord. Um, thank you for forgiving me instantly by the cross. And I, I invite you to give me power. I know you will to, to change in that area by the power of the Spirit. Boom. I can stay filled with the Holy Spirit. It's just like a little bitty speed bump. Um, now, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens is that we grow the fruit of the Spirit, which is the wisdom and character of Christ. And we are giving supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is actually the ministry of Jesus that you see. You get parts of it. He spreads out. We all do probably all of it in certain levels, but, but we're really good at, at parts of it. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Then it says, Do not despise prophecy. And, and, and it says, Test everything that you hear. Hold on to what is good and stay away from all evil. So if you are... Um, unbelieving, you know, or not using um, or not testing these supernatural gifts, you're stifling the Holy Spirit. That's part of what he's trying to bring. On the other hand, if you're all into these supernatural gifts, all about it, and, you know, chucking and, and jiving and everything, and, and you are not growing in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of character of the Holy Spirit, well, the Bible says that Jesus won't even recognize you, one thing, when, when, you, when you're at the judgment. Um, and the other thing it means 
that we will not even have the wisdom or character to even judge anybody else. We can't see ourselves. And so we need both the fruit and the ministry. Now on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit came down and the Apostle Peter, I mean, one, like 40 days ago, he was running and, and denying Jesus. Now, after he gets the Holy Spirit, he's boldly preaching Jesus and telling a huge crowd that you crucified Jesus, the Messiah, your Messiah. And they didn't even get to the altar call. That's happened to Peter a couple times in the scripture. He didn't get to his altar call. The spirit fell. This time he didn't get to the altar call. And uh, they said, they cried out to him, what should we do? When can we come forward? When are you going to stop so we can come forward? <laughs> what should we do? <laughs> and Peter said, he said, um, each of you must repent of your sin. That means change your thinking and your lifestyle. You got it all wrong. Repent of your sin. Turn to God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then you will, it's a promise, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that promise is for you and for your children, for all who are far away and all who are um, called. So that calling goes out right now to Anybody who's never given their life to Jesus, that's their calling right now. It says, indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. And if you wait, the heart gets harder, the mind gets duller, the hearing gets worse. But that's also a call to anybody who is stifling the Holy Spirit. The call to, to people who are stifling the Holy Spirit is, repent, you've got Christianity wrong. You need to change your thinking and your lifestyle. You, you need to... Repent of that kind of Christianity. You need to turn to God. Turn to him and be filled again with the Holy Spirit. Now, that day, 3,000 people got saved in one day. I was thinking, what happens if next week 3,000 people come to JPL? What am I going to do? <laughs> well, let me read what the apostles did with them. <coughs> That's a lot of... Uh, Extra chairs, huh, Jack? <laughs> have to build a couple stories. In um, Acts 2, 42 through 47, so it's 3,000 of them, all the believers devoted themselves. Devotion is better than just going through the motions. All the believers, well, it's Sunday, so... No, it's all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching for their minds and fellowship. We need other people. That's the way God created community. That's how we grow. We, will, we need other people. Fellowship. And the fellowship isn't just being around them. It's sharing thoughts, sharing feelings, sharing prayers, um, which we'll see here. Because it says they were sharing in meals. That's fellowship, including the Lord's Supper and in prayer. Praying together. A deep sense of awe came over them all. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. The miraculous should be in every church. Amen. It's a supernatural. Supernatural goes with that. And all the believers met together in one place, and they shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, and nobody was asking them to do that, by the way. It sprang out of their heart. And shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple every day, so they were going to church. But they also met in homes for the Lord's Supper and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill um, of the people. Um, and so uh, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. And so that's where we go for revival. You know, we, we just need to use the, stop stifling the spirit, use the Bible like a spiritual mirror to you look, oh man, I'm not looking so great. Ooh. You know, <laughs> that's what the Bible's for. It's not to condemn, it's to say, hey, how are you looking? Amen. You look like Jesus? <laughs> you know, and, and then we use that as a spiritual mirror. That's how we grow in every way more and more like Christ. Otherwise, we won't know how to do it. And just, just by doing that instantly, if you do that today, and you just make, I'm doing that now. You are instantly filled with the Holy Spirit like you're doing your whole life. And then you, we just grow. It's wonderful. This kingdom of heaven is near. So that's what a revival looks like. And um, it happened in the, their temple and in houses, both. 
I mean, obviously all of that stuff that they did is not going to happen in 90 minutes in a church service one time a week, right? right man. So that's why at JPL, we have connect groups in houses and in the church. And I would say, possibly more importantly, we have a spiritual foundations mentoring program. Why I say it's important is because it teaches people how to feed themselves every day. Otherwise, you're, you're a baby Christian for life. If you have to feed somebody, what does that say? You know, we, we, I need fed like everybody needs fed, but I know how to feed myself too. And that's for all of us. We, 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 need to, we can grow, easily grow, into feeding ourselves. Now, almost every change um, that we've made in church at JPL, uh, I, I tell myself, oh man, I should have done that a long time ago. You know, like Zoom or, or um, online. Um, but the Spirit has a way of using things like that to provoke needed changes. Have you ever experienced that in your life? You know, take a look at that great church in Jerusalem, a model church. They were so slow in getting to the ends of the earth. They're just having a good old time in Jerusalem, maybe a little bit out, until a great persecution slammed into Jerusalem and scattered them to the ends of the earth. So the Lord helped out a little bit, and they, they just went right on having their good time wherever they went. <laughs> to the ends of the earth. You know, when, when we decided to, um, we started doing an, a watch party here. And so uh, people would come and we just watch on the video. And I thought, man, we got all these live bodies here. I don't just watch a video together. Let's do something after the service. So we did. We had um, encounter mornings, God encounter mornings. The first one we did an impartation of the filling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The next one we did a communion uh, which is very powerful. Uh, you know, we put more time in it and, and prayer and, and words. And, and uh, the third time, we had a lot of worship going on. And then we had prophetic words going out, prayers going out, people sharing and ministering. And, you know, we put it out there, and I could tell there was a lot of juice on these meetings. You could tell it was very powerful. The Holy Spirit was saying, yes, this is what I want to do. So now... When we started live last week and, and in this week, it's like the Spirit pointed out to me, hey, did you notice that the online service ends about 5, 10, 15 after? It ends early. You have time to do your Holy Spirit encounter service still, even in a live service, because before we would be done, you know, it's kind of tight. And so um, what I'm asking, in, uh, what I'm, I'm asking, inviting everyone to do is our service here live, we'll bless our online friends, but our service here live, I would like to everyone to give the Holy Spirit 10 minutes. Can, can we all give the Holy Spirit 10 minutes? If we can't give the Holy Spirit 10 minutes, you can forget about being like Christ. I mean, we need to give them, like our, it's kind of like our vision team. We give the Holy Spirit time to kind of go fishing and, and wait on the Lord. Maybe he speaks this week, maybe in a month. You don't know, but you're always out there, always, always doing that. Um, and so um, what, what I wanted to um, suggest is that we give that 10 minutes to the, to the Holy Spirit. And what we'll do, we'll have some um, worship, which is being set up right now. So we'll go into the, to the worship time. And we will um, we'll just do whatever the Holy Spirit leads us to do, whatever the Holy Spirit um, you know, will worship and do what the Spirit leads us to do, what, what, he, what he leads you to do, and just give the Holy Spirit a chance. What I see is the whole church um, inviting the Holy Spirit, send me, change me. You know, um, I've got a prayer. Lord, save me from myself and rescue me from my ministry. How about that prayer? You know, with the Holy Spirit, ourself, and, you know, and we could all use more, more of him. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is looking for people like us that are going to do that intentionally because he's going to strike some sparks. He's going to rub some sticks together, and he's going to set people on fire. I, I think it's us inviting the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to get a hold of us, and all of a sudden we find ourselves sweeping. Can you imagine this? You're sweeping up, 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 like like Michael on a big wave when you're surfing. Up, up, up. Except this is a tsunami. And a small wave. Little, little bigger. And I surf small waves. Oh, you surf small waves. <laughs> well, 
Don't ruin my illustration. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, there you are, you're sweeping up, 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 up into the tsunami, and you break upon this earth, you break upon Coachella Valley, your friends, your family, with Jesus, but more importantly, or as importantly, like Jesus. And so I just want us to, to uh, receive that right now real quickly. And, and we do, Lord, right now. Um, I just speak, speak to all of us right now, Lord, that you will cause us. I just encourage you to be start asking the Holy Spirit, am I a cultural Christian? Am I even a Christian? Do I love, am I a friend of the world so much that I've made myself your enemy? And so, Lord, we, we pray as these, as, as these questions born from your spirit that we will have the joy of seeing the truth. Because when the truth comes, it's not going to be condemnation. It's going to be a delight. I'm so delighted that you asked me that. Yes, you are acting my enemy, but really, Christ died because I see you as a friend. <laughs> so let's make it happen right now. Does that sound good? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to um, uh, have a, a time of offering right, right now I'd like us to do, and I'd like us to speak some declarations at uh, this time. Uh, I want to uh, thank everyone for your generous support of JPL so we can do this church, have a, have a, a colony of heaven in this place and, and also online. Of course, uh, you can still give online like we many of us have gotten used to doing. We do have a box out there if you'd like to drop something in that box. It says card on it, so, but it's right by the, the door. That's the right one. But let me, let me uh, do our declarations here real quick. Um, I think, I hope I sent them. Didn't I send them to you, Amy? You got those declarations? Well, I gotta find them myself. Oh, here they are. All right, do we have them? We have, okay, here we are. So we're gonna read these together. And um, these are declarations uh, that, of faith, <laughs> of proclamation based in the scriptures and the word of God. And if you believe them, they move mountains. And if you don't, they do nothing. <laughs> they don't work. The, the, the way God set up is that his word is activated by faith. So let's take a look at it. this one first. You ready? I am a citizen of heaven. I have supernatural resources. Uh, relationships and resources from heaven. We'll leave it to the pastor to mess it up. Let, let's do it again. Well, let's go back to that other one I missed up. No, one next. Okay, ready? I have supernatural relationships and resources from heaven. True godliness with contentment is itself great gain. I am always be joyful and thankful in all circumstances. Excuse the typo. I'm learning to be content with whatever I have. What a count. Oh, that's the supernatural power of God. What's the next one? I desire a faith mindset of joyful generosity. I want to experience supernatural giving and receiving. I'm going to invite the prayer team to come up as well as we finish these off. God promised me power, prosperity with purpose. Now we got to do that one. <laughs> First time, next time, lost. God promises me prosperity with purpose. I will have abundant fruit in all areas of my life. Wonderful promises. Wonderful. Well, Lord, we just thank you right now for our financial area of our life, and we give it to you like every area of our life. Not giving one area of our life is like not giving any area of our life. It means we're still in control. So, Lord, we give you the financial area. We say, yes, thank you for giving it to us. We want to bless you with it. And, Lord, we do thank you that you promised prosperity with purpose on us and that you promised to give us everything we need. We can have peace in that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's see what kind of uh, words we might have uh, today, Jerry, Reverend Jerry. Well, as I was praying over this this morning, I, the Lord began to show me that those people have skin issues. Do you, you have itchy areas on different parts of your body. Sometimes it's gone, sometimes it comes back, but it seems to travel around your body. The Lord telling you it's not from him. So be aware if that's from you or from the Lord, and take that one. If you have blurry eyes, the Lord wants to heal you. I'll take that.
that one. <laughs> Emotional healing, any hurts of your heart? Yeah, I have a couple. Uh, one, the word is miracles. Need one? Then start believing in them. Nothing's impossible with God. Second one, steamroller. It, it's a heavy, slow-moving um, roller. We know what it is, I believe. It reminds me of John the Baptist when he said he made straight the way for Christ. And the word is, you, you've got a road ahead of you that looks really bumpy and it's not working out so great. You know, a lot of obstacles and stuff. And the word is... Stick with the Lord. He's a steamroller. Walk with him. And as you go, he will smooth your path uh, uh, before you. The last word um, is a very profound word. Uh, it's toots Tootsie Roll. <laughs> and what the word means is it's, you know, a Tootsie Roll is sweet and tempting opportunity, but it can pull out a filling. So... <laughs> When you look at your opportunities, the word is, some of you may be looking at an opportunity, take a good look. Just pray. Don't assume that you know all about it. So right now, I just want to pray. Pardon me. Word. The Lord just gave me another word. As you said, steamroller, the Lord said crushing. There's a python spirit. You feel like you're being crushed in your spiritual growth. You feel like you're being withheld. Uh, every time you try to break out, you get crushed. So if that's you, come and be released from that. Okay. So um, I'm just going to say a prayer right now. We're, we'll have time after, right at the end of the 10 minutes if you want to respond to your word. But right now, I just pray for our online friends. I just want to bless you. If you have one of those words for you or whatever particular needs, could you turn and just extend your hands towards the cameras, all of you, if you um, and just say, we just want to bless you right now for, for your word. Um, we pray in the Lord's name. I thank you that you send your word out and it accomplishes all you want it to. And so we bless you with these words that are sent out, that will come right to you, that you activate it with your faith and action, and that you're going to be blessed. So thank you for joining us this week, online friends. Blessings to you, and uh, have a great week. Hi, I hope today's message had a special meaning for you and you were touched by it. Also, if any of these words of knowledge applied to you, please leave us a comment, and we will continue to pray for you. And we hope that you are blessed by what we're doing. We would ask that you share this with some of your friends so that we can use this important tool to reach out to all of those who need to hear the word. And I'd like to leave you with a special blessing from Psalm, Psalm 100. And it says, shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. So let's make some joyful noise to the Lord this week. Hit that like button, share this with those you know, and have a blessed week.